Hello everyone and welcome to our next lecture of Learn to Swim and today we're going to be talking about the session plan, okay? Um, I've written down all for you, don't pay much attention to it right now, I'm going to talk you through step by step, okay? Uh, there is a saying and uh, it, it confirms that the session plans are important at any stage of development. The saying is, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I can't remember who, who uh, said it, but it's true, it's fact. Okay, so you have to plan everything from the very beginning. Um, as you can see, I've written down um, 30 minutes. Uh, lesson and uh, why 30 minutes and this 30 minutes lesson is for the age group uh, from four slash five years of age to about nine why because kids at this age they get easily distracted and half an hour it's the optimal time for them okay so if you want to get them to learn something and learn it uh, efficiently 30 minutes is the best time in terms of saving money as well, if you're a parent and you bring your child to the swimming lessons, obviously sometimes it can be quite costly. So instead of paying for one hour where your kids will be focusing for mostly for 30 minutes and the 30 minutes they will be, the teachers will be working mainly on their discipline and to get their attention and you will be paying for it. So really unnecessary. Okay, again, of course, there are individuals and the kids who might be able to withstand an hour session patiently of course there are exceptions everywhere but again i i deliver the i deliver the information to you based on statistics okay so 30 minutes from age of four slash five to nine years of age 30 minute session what do we need to start with we always have to start our sessions from the warm-up okay why before we get in the pool, yeah, we need to ensure that our muscles, joints, tendons are warmed up exactly the same as our respiratory system and cardiovascular system. So everything has to be warmed up and ready uh, for the effort that you're going to put on your body, okay? The warm-up prevents, prevents the swimmer from getting injured and this kind of stuff. It is, it, it is a must-do rule every time what kind of warm-up is it's it's debatable okay it depends on you a lot of swim schools they do warm-ups in the pool in the water for five minutes yeah like i said based on 30 minute session for five minutes depends on the skills depends on their abilities it really depends what i'm gonna do i'm not gonna tell you what to do on the warm-up right now i'm gonna upload a few session plans on the additional section where you can uh, download have a look and see for yourself all the session plans will be based on the information that i have uploaded on the course with all the body weight exercises and all that so you will see for yourself because we can spend hours talking about how to do the warm-up it would be better off for you to just see it for yourself i will upload probably three four five uh, session plans so you will you will see the examples and then you can follow them let's say uh, like we've covered the warm-up five minutes okay make sure you don't skip it don't jump straight into the into the uh, skill set okay do that base uh, spend some time like I said it is very 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 important a lot of a lot of teachers like I said sorry I have to get back to it a lot of people uh, a lot of teachers spend time uh, in the pool to do the warm-up uh, it doesn't have to be that way it doesn't have to be in the pool you can do warm-up on the side okay there are exercises again there are all included in your in the course uh, I'll put it on a session plan there are exercises you can do on the side that do exactly the same effect and even probably better uh, once you've warmed up and done all the um, exercises to warm your uh, cardiovascular system, your respiratory system, your muscles, tendons, joints, bones, everything. When you feel warm and you're ready to go, the next set will be the main set, okay? The main set or main goal, okay? So at the main set, you see it lasts for 15 minutes. This is, the, at this particular uh, section, you work on skills. 
okay? So on your session plan, because you've already planned it, you're gonna be focusing on a certain element you would like your swimmers to achieve today, okay? And this is what you're gonna be doing for 15 minutes. Try not to put too many uh, skills in one session. Remember, it takes time to achieve certain elements. I would personally recommend you to do, to learn one element, okay? No matter what it is, one element per main set, but spend 15 minutes on it, okay? Of course, with, with little rests in between, depends what you do, but 15 minutes focusing on one particular thing, okay? Because in swimming, what is very important is the consistency, okay? So if you do one thing again and again and again and again, at the end, yeah, it will pay off. The results will come, okay? So don't rush. Even if you know all the information in the world, try not to put it all into one main set. It's unnecessary. Each element takes time to achieve. That's very, very important, guys. Again, everything I say is important. That's why I keep repeating it, sorry. Um, main set, okay, be patient. Be patient. When you deliver the main set, and if you see your participant is struggling with something, don't stress, okay? Always give the feedback, what they do right, what they do wrong, okay? It's, it's not the bad thing, it's not a bad thing to tell your swimmers what they do right, what they do wrong. They need to understand that there are certain things they might be good at, there are certain things they might be not good at. So you have to give them a constructive feedback, okay? Not negative feedback, but constructive, okay? So it's not necessarily always positive, no matter the age. A lot of specialists will say otherwise, but I believe that as a teacher, you have to always tell the truth, no matter the age, but it's how you say it, okay? Try to say, tell the truth without negativity, okay? So it's kind of constructive. Yes, you've tried very well, but it's not what I expected from you. You can do better. This is not, this is not how it should be. Let's try, let's try again, let's try more until we get to the, uh, to the desired results, okay? So always be positive. There's no need to uh, be negative and stress out about it, okay? So again, yeah, focusing on one particular element for let's say 15 minutes. Even on, my, um, on, the, on the videos that you will see when you're learning strokes, each lesson, each lesson, starting from the backstroke, breaststroke, backstroke, front roll, breaststroke, butterfly, each video, each video you will see is focused on one element. You will see it, one element only, okay? Once you achieve that, you move on to the next step. Next lesson is a second element. And then again, so in videos, we'll learn one element per day, okay? Per session, sorry, okay? You've been working on it for 15 minutes, doing the same thing again and again and again, practicing you probably will notice that your swimmer might get bored. It's not just for kids, okay? It might be adults as well who decided to do half an hour session, okay? By doing the same thing again and again and again, makes you feel bored, okay? It does happen with anyone. This is why for this purpose, we have the next section is called contrasting activity. Contrasting activity. Uh, that might last for five, seven minutes. Contrasting activity is to basically, it's still based on skills, I'm gonna talk you through, still based on skills, but this is to give the swimmer a little bit of rest, okay? Because when they learn new skills on the main set, they're working on one thing, the brain gets tired, they get tired mentally, physically. This opportunity, uh, th th this section will give them opportunity to do something else and relax a little bit from the main set. However, when you do contrasting activities, make sure you focus on skills, okay? What can it be? Uh, it could be anything, anything, absolutely anything. Uh, let's say you're learning backstroke, okay? Your aim is the backstroke and today you've been working on the main set, backstroke kick on the back, okay? What you can do here, what you can do here as a contrasting activity, Maybe you could ask your swimmer to try to do leg kick on their front with the float, just to try, okay? They don't have to complete it, they don't have to accomplish it, just to give them a go, okay? So they're still learning things, but without, without um, aim to achieve it, does that make sense? So they just kinda 
kind of switching from one, one exercise to another and practicing something else without, without any goals or aims or stuff like that. Please don't get them free time to enjoy themselves and do whatever. Use the time wisely, okay? This section will give them an opportunity to relax mentally, physically, okay? But at the same time, they will be practicing something else. Again, guys, I will put that all into examples of the session plans. You will see it there, you will see it for yourself, how it is, how it works. And again, that's my suggestion, all right? So wait for it. <laughs> okay, again, in this contrasting activity section, you can spend five uh, to seven minutes. And the last section, guys, is the cool down, okay? Don't spend too much time on it. Uh, three to five minutes at the end of the session but again it is also important why because well make it as a rule so you have to get out the pool with the same heart rate with the low very low heart rate as you got into the training session so when you get to the training session you're nice and calm your heart rate is quite low yeah you're not tired at all your, your heart is not pounding okay by the end of the session your heart rate might be increased okay and the blood is pumping and then you're tired you need to give yourself time to cool down okay to cool down and to bring your heart rate back to normal to where it was at the beginning of the session uh, there is an example i used to work when i worked in leisure um, I, when i did lessons and coaching i worked as a fitness instructor and uh, and a personal trainer and um in my career, not personally when I did one-to-ones lesson, uh, but I have seen it happen. People, you know the treadmill, the, 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 the running machine, when you get on the treadmill and people do running, yeah? A um, couple of times in my career, I've seen it. People get on the treadmill, people get on the treadmill, they start to run, they run for whatever time, 15, 20 minutes or so, maybe, I don't know. And then they decide to stop and get off the treadmill right away without the cool down. And what happens? They turn the machine off, they step over it, and they collapse. Straight away, no matter how fit you are. I'm not saying it will happen, but it might happen. Why? Because, it, another example, if you drive a car, manual, manual car, you go on the motorway or autobahn, 100 miles an hour, whatever, gear five, gear six, yeah? And all of a sudden, you, you decided to switch from gear six to gear one. What's gonna happen to your engine? What's gonna happen to your system? Yes, it might fail, okay? Something might happen to it, okay? It is too much pressure, too much pressure on the system. Exactly the same with your body. If you're working at the high intensity and all of a sudden you decide to stop, get out the pool and walk, you might collapse because the body is still working hard. So you need to give it time to cool down. It doesn't take long, three to five minutes, <clears throat> okay? With my athletes, with the people that are preparing for the competitions, the cool down usually is 10 minutes. They just, they just do nice and easy swim to, uh, for 10 minutes. But again, these are professional athletes, they train for two hours per session, so that's different. This one is enough, three to five minutes. So. As a must-do rule, remember that you get out the pool with the same, in the same condition, body condition, with the same heart rate as you turn up to the training session. That is a must-do rule, okay? So that's why, we, going back to the treadmill where people collapse, that's why they collapse is because their heart rate was so increased and the body was working hard at the particular speed and then they stopped all of a sudden and they've done two steps and they collapse because the body hasn't cooled down hasn't calmed down okay and it's not the fact that the actual collapse might might hurt you it's when you fall you might hit the floor you might hit the head and that's it this is what will cause your injuries okay so that's what you don't want so please pay attention to cool down it is as important as a warm-up and the last but not the least important one, guys, is the evaluation. Evaluation. So what it means? It means you have to evaluate, you have to uh, think of or discuss with swimmers what went right and what didn't, okay? Um, 
you give them, remember I spoke earlier, you give them a constructive feedback, what they might need to focus on next time, uh, what they might need to do outside the pool. Remember, we've discussed about the additional elements they need to practice. Maybe something hasn't worked out uh, on the main set due to their um, uh, physical restrictions. As a teacher, you might, you, you might see it. And what you can do, you might suggest them to do certain um, activities at home to uh, improve their physical restrictions so they can actually finally achieve the desired results. Okay, evaluation is important. Try to finish the lesson on the positive note all the time. There's no need to be negative. There's no need to finish on a negative note because what you want from uh, swimmers at any age is to have a desire to come back, to have a will to come back. So they have to want to come back. They have to enjoy it. So even if they, you think they failed during the training session, everything hasn't it didn't work right at all. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Remember, in swimming, we fail nine times out of ten. So that might be that time when they failed. The next session, they might fail again. So don't worry about it. Make sure and encourage your swimmers uh, not to worry also. Good evaluation, good feedback, constructive feedback. As I said, think what might be what might go in a way of them achieving their results the desired results again might be physical restrictions shoulder mobility or this kind of stuff or not enough flexibility something tell them that and then tell them say so guys listen i would recommend you to practice this and this and this at home to improve your physical restrictions that would stops you from achieving whatever you want it could be anything it could be absolutely anything but make sure you do evaluate the session. It's not just with swimmers, with yourself, okay? So you reflect on the session and look at yourself as a teacher and think, what could I possibly do better? How could I, what possibly went right? What didn't go right, okay? So think about it. Always evaluate yourself. Don't think you're perfect, okay? There's no such thing as a perfect human being, first of all, and there's no such thing as a perfect teacher. It's a saying, again, I can't remember who said it. Um, if the teacher or coach thinks he knows everything and he's the best, this person is dead as a teacher or as a coach, okay? So there's always something to learn, always something to improve. You can't be perfect as an athlete. You can't be perfect as a teacher or coach. Always evaluate, always look at yourself, always reflect and see what can be done to be better, okay? And to quickly wrap this section up, um, remember session based on 30 minutes, five minutes warm up, getting our body ready for it, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, bones, tendons, joints, ligaments, and all that has to be ready to prevent from getting injured. The main set, the main goal, 15 minutes, okay, working on one element, for 15 minutes trying to improve that element okay do not put too much into it one element per uh, main set contrasting activity is to give your brain and your your muscles a little rest so you might switch to another group of muscles okay the main thing is the people who get bored at this session they actually getting a little rest here five seven minutes okay focusing on skills but without aiming to achieve anything Cool down, three to five minutes, again, to get your heart rate back to normal, to uh, make sure your muscles go back to normal, they're relaxed and you feel calm, you have exactly the same, you feel exactly, you should be feeling exactly the same here at the end of the session as you were feeling before you started the session. Same uh, heart rate, okay? Do not get out tired and with an increased heart rate and of course evaluation at the end so you reflect on everything you have done during the, se the training session including uh, your uh, participants performance and including yourself that's it for today guys that's it for now and if you uh, want to learn more and want to move on i will see you in the next clip